Praise the Lord. Somebody there I said, Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Great morning, everybody. Miracle morning, everybody. The Lord bless everyone beyond your expectation. And this day be a great day for you in Jesus' name. And may he answer all your requests. And fulfill the great desires of your heart. Give me headquarters. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in your strength. And we come through the gate opened by the blood of the Lamb. And Lord, we pray today that to shower your blessings down upon your people in Jesus' name. Make this day a great day day for everyone. Glorious day for everyone. Miracle power anointing day for everyone. Break every yoke. Destroy the works of the devil. Set your people free and let joy fill the heart of everyone. That the joy of the Lord will be the strength of your people. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're reading from Hebrews chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 25. We're talking about our great intercessor. We're talking about the ever-living intercessor. The one who is praying for us. And the one whose prayers will never go unanswered. Hebrews chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them as you look at that verse it talks about God coming unto God turning out away from sin and turning away from evil and coming unto God what he tells us the only way to come to God is through Jesus Christ. It's not through your religious effort, your personal endeavor, your giving of money, or anything you can do by yourself. It says it is Christ who makes the way and clears the path for us to come unto God. And he says, for all who come, he is able. And as you come, you come in conversion. You come in consecration. And you come in commitment unto the Lord. And he says, those who come, he is able to save them to the uttermost. That means to save them through and through. Number one, save them from sin. Number two, save them from powers of Satan or evil spirits. Number three, save them from sickness. Save them in all circumstances. Save them today. Save them in life. And save them until they enter into glory. Wherefore, he is able. Your God is able. Your Redeemer is able. Your Savior is able. There will never come a situation in your life. There will never come any challenge in your life. There will never come anything in your life that will say, God 
is not able because our God is more powerful than Satan. Our God is more powerful than evil spirit or evil power. Because your God is able. That's why you have confidence in him. For he is able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him. See, because he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He's praying for you by the throne of God. And he has you in mind. He has your situation in mind. He has your pressures in mind. He has the challenges you have in mind. They say the day he will deliver you. The ever living intercessor. There are three things we're going to consider. Number one, the compassion of the great intercessor. Why does he pray for you? Why is he thinking about you? Why is he taking your problem unto the almighty God before the throne of grace? Because of his compassion for you. The compassion of a great intercessor. Number two, the concern in his great intercession. He has a burden for you. You will succeed. He has a concern for you. This Christian life, you will make a success of it in Jesus' name. Everything he had in mind, when he called you, he has a concern that his purpose for you, his purpose in your life, will not be frustrated. It will not be frustrated in Jesus' name. The concern of his great, in his great intercession. Number three, our cooperation for the great intercessor. Our cooperation with the great intercessor. Come to number one. Tell me number one over there. The compassion of our great intercessor. We're looking at Hebrews chapter five. Hebrews chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. For every high priest, taken from among men, is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices look at this who can have compassion on the ignorant it's talking about the priests of those days the high priests of those days and it's bringing it now to the high priesthood of christ and he's saying christ replaces them because christ is greater than them all he has come with a final sacrifice. And it's the sacrifice of his blood. The sacrifice of his life. And as he comes to make that final sacrifice for you and for me, he says he has done that as the high priest. And as the high priest of those days made intercession for the people of Israel. It says Christ is making intercession for you on one ground, on one condition, because of his compassion. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? The people who have gone astray, all we like sheep have gone astray and he is not punishing us for that. He said, I'll suffer for you because you've gone astray. I'll bring you back. He'll bring you back to your inheritance. And he says, he has compassion on them. For that he himself is compassed about with infirmity. It tells us in Mark chapter 6. The compassion of a great 
intercessor. Remember, a great intercessor is the one who died for us. And is the one who has gone to heaven. And then he's at the right hand of majesty on high. And he's praying for you. And he's praying for me. And he's praying for us. Our lives will be victorious. You didn't hear? I said your life will be victorious. Because he has compassion for you. Mark chapter 6. Verse 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people. And he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion toward them. Why are we reading this? Because there's something that happened in the past. Because Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever, the compassion he had at that time, he still has the compassion today. And he said that Jesus Christ, when he saw much people, he was moved with compassion toward them because they were a sheep having, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. What does he teach us? Because he knows who are ignorant and because he has compassion on the ignorant, that's why he teaches us. And this talks about his compassion for you, that you are ignorant or you've been ignorant in the past, maybe of some things, doesn't mean that the intercessor will not be compassionate upon you. He will be even this morning. It will show that compassion on your life. Matthew chapter 9. Reading from verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved. With what? Tell me out loud. He was moved with compassion on them. And remember, it's still the same. He pities you in your condition. He wants to have mercy upon you in your condition. He has compassion upon you in your condition. It's going to turn that negative thing around in your life and in his compassion and whatever you expect. This person should have done for you. That person should have done for you. And they have not been done because he will not allow you to keep on suffering. Compassion has come. Compassion on them because the vintage. And they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. Harvest is talking about the people. Harvest is talking about the sheep. Harvest is talking about the helpless. Harvest is talking about the hopeless. Harvest is talking about the oppressed. Harvest is talking about those people that were scattered abroad like no sh and they have no shepherd. And he said, there's so many and he has compassion on them. And because of that, he says, the harvest truly really is plenteous, but the laborers are few. What's the next thing then? Pray. You see that? He has compassion on them. It's like they have no shepherd. It's like they have no helper. It's like they have no hope. It's like they have no sustenance. It's like they, they do not have the strength to live and the strength to stay. And because of that, he says, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send laborers, helpers unto his harvest. His compassion leads him to want to help you, to want to save you. For him to deliver you. For him to restore you. His compassion does not condemn. His compassion does not oppress. His compassion does not blame. His compassion does not say, uh -huh, you let yourself into that. Take care of yourself. His compassion drives him and moves him to want to help you. He will help you today. 
He will heal you today. He will restore you today. He will change everything that needs a change in your life in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 1 verse 40. Mark chapter 1 verse 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him. That means pleading with him. That means praying to him. That means begging him. That means requesting of him. That means asking him passionately. And kneeling down to him. And saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. This was an ignorant leper. This was a helpless leper. This was a person that had a contagious disease. And because nobody could help him, they'll put him outside the camp. And then he heard of Jesus, our great intercessor. Jesus, our great helper. Jesus, the one that comes to lift us up. It will lift you up. No matter how far you have gone, it will lift you up. No matter how terrible that sickness may be, it will lift you up. Today is your day. Somebody there said, today is your day. What is he there? I said, what is he there? It will touch your life. It will cleanse your life. It will heal your sickness. It will take care of all those things and you'll never be the same again. Look at verse 41. And Jesus, tell me what follows there. And Jesus, I'm waiting for you to tell me. Jesus shouted at me here. Moved with compassion. He knows your case. He sees your tears. He's concerned about you. Every time a person that needs help, a person that needs healing, a person that needs deliverance, every time a person that needs something to be done that no doctor can do, that no helper can do, because Jesus knows he has all power, he has all authority, and he knows he can do it. He can deal with your case. My sister, I said he will deal with your case. My brother dear, he will deal with your case. And because he knows he is the final hell. And this leper could not get any help from anywhere else. Jesus looked at him as he's looking at you. And he has compassion on him. You will not die of that sickness. You will not die of that infirmity. Those powers that are after your life, they will not get you. Because you run here, you run there, you're tired of running. And then you say, Lord, what am I going to do? Looks like the lion in the land is going to catch me and is going to break my bone. Never. I said never. I said no, never. The lion of the tribe of Judah will get to you before that other lion gets there. He will crush that lion. He will destroy that lion. Rejoice today because the compassion of the Lord will never fail upon your life in Jesus' name. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him. That's all I need. And touched him. That's all you need. A touch from heaven. A touch of his hand. A touch of his power. A touch of his anointing. A touch of his blood. And Jesus moved with compassion. He stretched forth his hand and he touched him. And he said, I will. In your case, I will. 
In your situation, I will. In your challenges, I will. In your family, I will. On that child, I will. In that business, I will. In that case of barrenness, I will. In that situation that appears precarious, perilous, dangerous, Jesus comes to you this morning and he says, tell me out loud, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately praise the lord immediately i said praise the lord the compassionate christ will never come late to your life he'll never come late in your situation and immediately the leprosy departed from him and he and he and he was clean and you, I said, and you, you are clean, you are healed, you are delivered, you are set free. It is your day. Tears are going to be wiped away. It is your day. Mountains will move away. It is your day. The compassion of the Lord will move mightily in your life in Jesus name because he cleansed him in that same way he will cleanse you he will cleanse your soul he will cleanse your spirit he will cleanse your family he will cleanse your body his power will work in your life mightily because in first john chapter 1 verse 7 but if we walk in the light somebody there you've come out of darkness now you're in the light i said now you're in the light jesus is the light of the world and you're walking in the light of christ and if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, tell me now, tell me out loud, tell me that you know this is yours, cleanses us from all sin. Number two is the concern, the concern in his great intercession. Why is he praying for you? Why is he praying for me? Why is he our great intercessor on the throne before the almighty God on the throne of majesty? Why is he praying for you? The concern in his great intercession. We're looking at Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. That thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Let me remind you once again that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever, is still the same today. I'm talking to somebody that said, Jesus is still the same today. Number one, he knew what Peter did not know. He knew and he saw the enemy Peter did not see. He knew the intention of the enemy that Peter 
was ignorant about. Jesus knows what you don't know. Jesus has seen what you have not seen. And Jesus is concerned that the things you see and the things you don't see will not destroy you. My people did not hear what I said. I said Jesus is concerned and is going to make his power to work against the enmity of Satan and his cohorts. The ones you know and the ones you don't know. The great intercessor is going to deliver you from them. Something Peter did not know. God was interested in Peter. Christ was interested in Peter. And Satan was interested in Peter. And it's like a precious, precious, precious vessel. Christ is saying, I'll make him one of my champions. And Satan looked at him and he said, if I leave this one alone, it will do great damage to my kingdom. I need to get him on my side. I need to have him. Christ wanted to have him. Satan wanted to have him. You don't know how precious you are. That's why Satan is interested in this commodity. If I don't get any other property, I will get this one. If I don't use any other property, I will use this one. There is something deposited in him that if I can have him, I can use that. And Jesus is saying, I see something in you. I must use you. I must have you. I must possess you. You will be one of my champions. Somebody there, you are a champion. My brother there, you are a champion. My sister there, you are a champion. Peter did not know that. That's why he said, I go a fishing. That's why he said, I am a failure. That's why he said, I will never amount to anything. And Jesus still ran after him. Jesus is running after you this morning. He said, I'll clean you up. Whatever has happened, I will clean you up. There is something in you that the Almighty has put in you that can make you a champion in my kingdom. And no matter how Satan tries, he will not get you. I said he will not get you. Satan and Jesus in competition for one man. Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. But I prayed for you. This morning, the powers above your strength will not catch you. Because the concern of the Lord, now you can relax, now you can relax. The concern of the Lord is that that good thing inside you will be put to good use for the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. And Peter did not understand. He said, he said Lord, don't worry about me. Who am I? Who am I? That Satan will be after me. Who am I? That Satan will want to have me. Who am I? What can I do? That Satan will want to have me. And Jesus said, whether you know it or not, whether you accept it or not, I will pray for you. Whether you know it or not, Christ is praying for you. Whether you see the need or not, Christ is praying for you. And the purpose of your creation will be fulfilled. And the purpose of your redemption will be fulfilled. You are in the church at such a time as this. There's value on you. There's worth in you. And there is great value in your life. That's why it says, But I have prayed for thee. 
and thank God is praying for you. Look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 1. Here is the concern of the great intercessor. The concern of the great intercessor. Brethren, Romans chapter 10 verse 1. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That's the concern. He died for you. And even though you are careless, even though you don't even know what you're doing, even though you are not taking the salvation seriously, even though you are thinking that your self-righteousness is enough, he knew he died for you, Christ. And he knew you are a soul to be saved. And he's praying for you. You will come into that salvation in Jesus' name. Full salvation. I said full salvation. Free salvation. It will set you free. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 11. is telling us, He shall see the travail of a soul and shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Look at verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he has poured out his soul unto death. He's talking about Christ and he was numbered what the transgressors for your sake it was counted as a transgressor your transgressions were laid upon him and he bared the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors he made intercession for the sinners father forgive them for they do not what they do he made intercession for the backsliders. Peter, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. But I prayed for you. He made intercession for the believers. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. But I pray for them whom you have given unto me. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It's making intercession for you. You will be strong. You will stand. You'll be stable in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 34. The concern of his great intercession. The concern in his great intercession. I'm reading from Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? What does he say now? Tell me. Who, should, who also maketh? What's that? Intercession for us. Why is he making that intercession? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? It's making intercession for you so that nothing will separate you from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation, give me an answer now, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or such, is making intercession for you that nothing that the devil tries to do will destroy your faith. 
but you're becoming stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. You're going to find at the end of this retreat that strength has come into you. Courage has come into you. The intercession of Christ has availed in your life. As it at his retreating, verse 36, For thy sake are we killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And have they killed us? No, look at verse 37. Nay. Nay. Everybody say nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's the concern. In his great intercession. That's the purpose. In his great intercession. That's the result. In his great intercession. That will be the outcome. In his great intercession. That because he has compassion on you. And because he knows that in your own strength. If you are led to yourself. You will be crushed. You will crumble. That's why he's making intercession for you. That you will stand. That you will be more than a conqueror. That the power of the Lord will sustain you. And will lift you up in Jesus name. Number one. The compassion of a great intercessor. Number two, the concern in his great intercession. Number three, our cooperation with the great intercessor. Our cooperation with the great intercessor. Let me show you what that means. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 32. Luke chapter 22. Look at verse 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. I, Christ, I, the Savior, I, the Redeemer, I, the lifter up of your head, I, the one that is going to give himself for your ransom, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Aha, uh -huh. if he has prayed, that's all. If he has prayed, that's enough. If he has prayed, that's sufficient. Look at verse 40. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. What's that? Cooperate with me. Cooperate with the intercessor. Verse 32, I have prayed for thee. Verse 40, pray. That she enter not into temptation. Support his intercession with your prayer. Support his righteousness with your repentance. Support his sacrifice with your self-denial. Support his intercession with your own groaning. And your own prayer. And your own seeking. After the Lord. Support his intercession. With your importunity. Talking to God. Asking God. That God himself. Will make the intercession of Christ. Avail for you. Look at verse 46. 
In verse 46, and search unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. He's saying, you need to support and cooperate with a great intercessor. Look at John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 9. John 17. He prays, you pray. You pray, he prays. And that prayer of yours, cooperating with the great intercessor, will avail this morning in Jesus' name. I will pray. Can you say that? I want to hear you. I will pray. And then as your prayer comes in line, as your prayer comes in support, as your prayer comes in cooperation, as your prayer comes side by side with the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great and the mighty intercessor, join those two prayers together. An explosion of power, explosion of miracle will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Somebody there give me a good amen. In John chapter 17, verse 9, I pray for them, he's praying for me. I said he's praying for me. I said he is praying for me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. You see it? For they are thine. You are born again? For they are thine. Your name is in the book of life. For they are thine. That's why it says, I pray for them. Look at verse 11. And now... I am no more in the world, but they, these are in the world, and I come to thee. This is the prayer, Holy Father. This is the prayer of the intercessor, righteous Father. Keep them through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one. As we are one. Keep them. That's the prayer. Keep them. That's the prayer. It will keep you. But look at Jude. Verse 21. Jude. Verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God. You see that cooperation there? The great intercessor prayed. And he said, Father... Keep them and keep them through thy name. The ones who have given unto me. And now the word of God tells us. It says, uh -huh, the great intercessor is praying for you. Keep them from sin. Keep them from sickness. Keep them from oppression. Keep them from Satan. Keep them from the powers of the world. And then it says... Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto everlasting life. Keep them, keep them. He wants you to also keep yourself cooperation with the great intercessor. We're looking at Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Reading from verse 36. Matthew chapter 9. We're reading from verse 36. It's telling us about the compassion of the great intercessor. Look at this. Chapter 9 verse 36. It says, but when he saw. 
the multitudes. He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then says he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Then he tells us about the intercession. Pray. Pray. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers unto his harvest. That's the prayer. Look at chapter 10, the very next verse. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Then he gives us their names and then in verse 7, and as she go, preach. You know, in chapter 9, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. And now following that, he said, there must be cooperation. And the cooperation is, as we're praying, that the Almighty God will send laborers unto his harvest. He now said, you've been praying, now you will cooperate in the prayer. And he called them. And he sent them forth. And he said, as she go, you will preach and say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. And then he says, raise the dead, cast out devils freely. Ye have received and freely give. It will be given to you. And then you give to all the people. You need to pray. Yes, he's praying. And then you cooperate for the great intercessor. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. We're reading from verse 19. James 5. Verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do hear from the truth and one converting let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save the life from death his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins i thought it's jesus that does that here that's what we're saying he is the great intercessor. Somebody has gone out of the way and Christ is concerned and Christ is compassionate and is praying for him. And then he said, brethren, cooperate with the great intercessor and pray for them. And as your prayer goes in line with the promises of God, with the prayer of Christ, in the power of the Lord. Today, you will do all things in your life. I thought somebody will say, Amen. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 28. Chapter 8. Verse 28. And we know. And you will know this morning. And we know. I said you will know each this morning. That all things work together for good. To them that love God. And to them who are the called according to his purpose. Verse 32. He that spared not his own son. But delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also Give us how many things? All things. That's why he's making intercession for you. That everything he provided 
on the cross of Calvary will be yours today. He prays and you pray. And those prayers in cooperation, in unity together, will bring an explosion of power in your life. In Jesus' name, you'll be more than a conqueror. You will conquer sin. Somebody there, you will conquer sin. You will conquer sickness. You will conquer Satan. Because everything you ask, he has given us Jesus Christ. And because he has given us Jesus, given us salvation, given us everything related to salvation. And he says, how much more will he then not give us all things freely? It is your time to possess all those things. Somebody there has said it is your time. Somebody there has said it is your time to possess all those things. You rise up and you tell the Lord in cooperation with the great intercessor. In cooperation with the great intercessor. is praying for you. is praying for you. is praying for you. He has compassion. He has compassion. The great intercessor has compassion for you. He has a concern. He has a concern. The great intercessor has a concern for you. He needs your cooperation. A cooperation of the great intercessor. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth in cooperation with the great intercessor. And say, here I come this morning i pray i pray i pray and because he prays and you pray and there's cooperation great things mighty things will happen in your life you'll be a conqueror over sin a conqueror over sickness a conqueror over evil spirits open your mouth and pray